sum up in a nutshell what um, you're kind of working on right now, uh, you're, you know, you're exploring different places? So. Yeah, definitely. Well, I um, have been really blessed to get the opportunity to travel across the country and um, share basically my story. So that's what, I'm, that's what I do. I travel. I grew up in the church and uh, went to Christian school and then ended up in public school and ended up in a bunch of sports. So the things that I write about um, tend to come from a place of faith. Um, tend to like, talk about, okay, this is something that I went through. How does my belief in my faith in God intertwine with that? So those are my songs. So how long have you been um, with, the, with the band? Have you always been well, I started writing when I was 14, so obviously no band then. <laughs> um, but I, I kind of had a youth band at our church, so I, I played with them. But we didn't travel much until I was in high school. We did uh, we did play at some churches when I was in high school, but that was an official, you know, touring. Um, but by the time I was a senior in high school, um, was when I started traveling more, um, had an actual band play with me. So that was 2009. Ever since I've had players. Yeah, I've just been in the since about December of last year. So okay. it's just under a year. Right now. Yeah. How'd you get involved with the band? How did you? Yeah, we had. Yeah, I had a kind of a mutual friend. Um, both knew us in Portland that had introduced us. So hey, Nicole, would you be interested in auditioning? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. So how many other? Uh, currently, there's only three of us. Okay. So she plays drums, I play the acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. and then we have a piano player. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So at one point there was like five, but um, it, was, it was too chaotic. It's easier for traveling to mm -hmm. do smaller stuff. So. Well, I'm super passionate about being transparent and just being on so people say, hey, um, this is me, this is my life, like this is what I've gone through. These are situations that I've found myself in. and. Um, and I know I'm not alone in, all, in those situations. There are so many people on this earth that have gone through things. And um, I just want to be a voice to say to other people, like, you're not alone. You know? like, so being transparent and then also um, just want to encourage people and offer them hope beyond that. Beyond saying, yeah, you're not going through it alone. But here's, here's a solution that I've found that's actually worked for me. Like, this actually had fruit in my life and actually changed. Well, I found myself, like I said, when I was young, really involved with the church. Um, and I just continued to just invest where I was at. You know, I just played songs when I had opportunities. If there was talent shows, I would sing at them. There's open house, coffee house opportunities in Wenatchee. I'd go there um, and play at Cafe Mela or whatever. Um, and then put some songs on MySpace and a producer from Tacoma found the songs and it's like, I don't know, I just think there's a lot of value in being faithful to the place in which you find yourself now. Like don't overlook where where you are in this moment um, because it is a part of your future even though you, you might not be able to see that. But what I did have to overcome eventually was struggles like body image. Like I, I really began to fear what people thought of me more than just like as an artist but what they saw when they looked at me and I thought that I was valued by that, you know, like what people, like I thought my value came from what people thought of me, and that's not the truth, and, but it took me over five years to figure that out, so, well, there's a song that I wrote on my album called Tapestry, um, 2010, that one was released, called Undertow, and that song is a song for anybody right now who's in the middle of something bigger, darker than they can handle, um, I wrote that song while I was going through it, and I just, like I can't get out of this. Like how can I? The lyric is, um, it says, uh, pull me up out of the undertow. Like I'm stuck here. Like my black from my black and blue. Like you just feel bruised. You feel broken. You feel like confused and stuck. And so that's what that song's all about. It's actually there's not really a much of a resolve in that one. Um, but then it, as I started to walk um, even more in my faith with God, I he. He brought this feeling into my life that was like, it's beyond words for me. It's like I, I never expected it, and I, I prayed for it, but, and he answered my prayer. It wasn't in a second. It took like a year to be, even just begin the process, you know, of that healing. Um, but he did it, and he was faithful, and he was, he showed himself true to me as the healer who answered my prayer. Um, because I've learned that in church growing up. So I got to see that firsthand, um, and I ended up writing a song about that process where the healing began and 
how it happened is that we fell through my father's eyes. And um, one of the things that um, I believe was an encouragement from God specifically for me, um, it's like we think, um, we, we all have thoughts, we all have lots of different thoughts that pass through our mind. And one of the ways that I decipher um, my thoughts from possibly God's thoughts or possibly um, thoughts from an enemy or whatever is just saying, okay, what's true and what's, what's false going through my mind right now? And am I telling myself that I'm ugly, or is that somebody else, you know? Or am I telling myself that I'm not worth something, or is that somebody else? So anyway, I had this thought passed through my mind, and it wasn't something that I normally think, so I give credit to God for that. And um, it was this thought of, you know, Holly, if you, if you insult yourself the way that you look, you're not insulting yourself. Like, you're insulting your creator. And to me, God, like, I believe with all my heart that God created everything in this world that's beautiful and good, and um, and he called the things that he created good, and I was one of those things. Um, you were one of those things. We were all one of those things that he called good, and for us to say that we're not good is, is insulting him. And just as I create things and call it good, like, if I, that thing said back to me, I'm not good, you know? It's like, that's the lie, you know, so I've been feeding, I had been feeding myself these lies like that for a long time, and believing them, and, and they began to control my actions, and the people I wanted to hang out with, and things I thought about myself and other people, and um, just ended up putting me in a really dark place, and so finally when I was able to see that, like, I am not my own, like, I am a beautiful work of somebody bigger and greater than me, um, it helps me find confidence. So, in that song, it says, um, I'm finding beauty for the first time looking through my father's eyes instead of my own face. Gosh. One of the things I really, really believe in is, um, is a very Christian word called grace. <laughs> and uh, what we, what, that word forever was frustrating to me because I didn't understand what it meant. Um, but finally, it kind of clicked in my head. It's like grace is this, this thing where God can take somebody who feels absolutely broken and not, not deserving or worthy or not good enough and and he can take us because that's how often that we often feel all that way you know like that's why we get nervous that's why we get you know afraid um as he says like i can take you just like that and i can i can be you let me be part of your life and i'll make those broken pieces like a part of my most beautiful strength and so um anyway when I go to shows and I share that story with people, it's like the most amazingly gracious thing that I get to experience night after night is hearing stories that are even darker than mine. And girls or guys coming up to me and saying like, thank you. And then sharing this, you know, this girl, um, I can't remember all the specifics, but this one time, this girl came up to me and she was saying, Holly, my dad um, molested me when I was like four or five or whatever. And she was, I could not get over it. And um, but I think she she just came and she wanted me to know, like, because you shared your story of healing, like, this is my story of healing, you know? So I got to see and hear her testimony in a totally darker, deeper, more desperate place than I ever was, you know? Um, and to see her face, like, be lit up with joy, it's like, I didn't do that, like, I didn't do that for her, you know? So it's, like, God's grace to me that I get to experience stuff like that. My, my favorite part about it, for sure, is the opportunity to get to talk about Jesus you know, to people. Like, that's just bottom line for me. Um, it's not about the money. It's not about the being on the stage. I'm actually more introverted, so I, I struggle with anxiety and nerves a lot. So I'd rather be home. I'd rather be on the farm. Like, I'd rather be here, <laughs> you know, um, not traveling, because I don't like to travel a ton. I like to see places, but I'm... Uh, yeah, that's another story, but um, anyway, uh, but I love getting the chance to encourage people. I just love it. I love getting to share hope because it's so easy in this world, I think, to be discouraged. But there's so much life out there. There's so much joy. Um, just, I mean, if you take time to look around you and you just you look at the sky and you look at the creation and you look at these people and you just see how intricately everything is made, it's like... That alone, apart from like spiritual talk, is like so much, so full of life. But we're so taught and fed media and iPhones and computers, and I'm totally into that too. So I understand that. But it's like there's so much life out there that I just want to redirect 
elevators you redirect people's attention. Hey, don't forget, there's that beautiful things around there. Social media has been an incredible um, invention, I guess. Uh, I love Instagram. That's pretty incredible. Um, I connect them all, so I don't have to do like posting on every page. But yeah, Instagram is my my hub probably more, more than anything. So yeah, I love it. It's it connected. I mean, when I first started, um, MySpace was pretty new, um, and we took advantage of that. And I mean, hey, it got me like an open door to record a CD. So I'm all about telling people, hey, like take opportunities that are in front of you. Like don't. So internet is one way that you can do that. And I think things are you kind of have to be on that train to be in the culture musically now. So. I like it. it. It's more transparent. I love being transparent. Nice. So, I mean, I don't, I don't normally go online and like post, like, hey, I'm writing this new song. What do you think? I usually wait on that stuff for a little bit. Um, but I post mostly, like, I'll do video blogs. So like, hey, I'm an iPhone. like, hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Holly. Like, here's a verse that I read today that super encouraged me. Hopefully, it'll encourage you. So, like, two or three minute video blogs on YouTube. But um, yeah, so I'll do that, or I'll post. I like to be silly sometimes, if I can actually think of anything silly. <laughs> um, so that's kind of fun. I don't know. Talk about how much I love Target. Or, you know. <laughs> are people, when you meet people and you know, you're out and about, are people surprised that you're from Quincy, Washington? I mean, are you surprised you're from the whole town? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's really funny because Nicole, she's she's from Yakima, so she's not too far from Quincy. So she knows the area. So, so I have Nashville musicians play for me sometimes, and they'll come out here and they're like, I honestly cannot believe you live here and do this. <laughs> so, but I mean, it's all part of who I am and what I want to be and what I want to continue being. It's just like, you know, this is there's like so much real life that happens in a small town. And, in central Washington, <laughs> so my dad's a farmer, and I love that. So it's just, it just keeps it real for me. So uh, your favorite social media right now is? I love YouTube. YouTube's, YouTube. I mean, I love Instagram. Instagram's my favorite, but then YouTube is probably my next because of like it just ha it's worked super well for me. It's, mm -hmm. um, we have a, a video on there right now. Well, we have three videos. Um, but one of them, Don't Have Love, uh, was one of my biggest singles off of the last project. Um, Such a fun song. Thank you. Yeah, thank really you. fun. Yeah, that one did really well on YouTube, so I'm mm -hmm. thankful for, for YouTube in that way, for sure. So. Did you video that around here? No, I wish I did. We did it in Florida. Mm -hmm. and, oh, nice. Yeah, we did it in Florida. It's, um, there were some, like, all of the videographers from Nashville, so it's, it's some, for some mm -hmm. reason it's easier to film in Florida, <laughs> Tennessee, the so we're huh. there. I believe in the power of prayer, just so every day it was like casual prayer, like, okay, God, I'm struggling, we take this, like, take it away, take it, please take it away, and I was literally over and over and over and over again what I would think every day, and about two-thirds of the way through that year, I started to realize that my mind was changing, and I was starting to see myself differently in those thoughts, like, you know, you're beautiful because you're created by a creator of the entire world made you. And he says, you're altogether beautiful, my love. There is no flaw in you. Like, that's his words about us. Like, oh my gosh, it just gives me shivers thinking about it. Like, there is no flaw in you. Who's told you that, right? Yeah. Nobody tells us that. Mm -mm. But that's the truth. Like, that's truth. So, I don't know, my mind began to change and I began to see people differently and see myself differently. And, um, so that's where that freedom began to creep its way into my life in, mm -hmm. in the more, most beautiful way I can ever imagine. And uh, it's and his healing became so real and true to me. It's like I don't really know it now. I, I've experienced it, and it's not just healing. It's not just like I'm going to take your problem away so you don't struggle with it. It's right. I'm going to take that away, and then I'm going to give you life and joy and and excitement and passion and zeal and all these things that you were like not that you didn't have before, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like this, I don't know, it's just his healing is like way more than we can. It, his healing extends to me to this very day. It's like there's, he's still working things out in me right now, which is mm -hmm. amazing. Right, and I think something you said earlier too was, it's not a, it did, you know, it, not only did it not happen overnight, but it's still kind of a process. It is, and it's, yeah. Is that, I mean, something that's, 
really big still. I mean, in, and so it's lies in your mm -hmm. music. And yeah, it's definitely. Um, I mean, I still this day have to um, like not have a mirror in my bedroom. Like, I can't have a full body mirror in my bedroom. I just know that's a bad thing for me to have. It's not good. So, like, I, I get to encourage girls, like, all the time. Okay, here's some boundaries that I've had to set for myself so that I don't get so depressed, you know, so I don't have mirrors in my bed, my bedroom. And my, my roommates and my best friends know about those boundaries so that they can keep me accountable. And, um, and then I can't be on, on Instagram when I'm in bed, you know, like there's just stuff that you have to, you have to put up for yourself. So yeah, it definitely still extends. So what are some things that you're working on now? I mean, you seem like you're, from your email too, you're pretty busy, you've got some working, a more shows lined up this year, but are you working on new, new material or? Yeah, I mean, I, it was a year ago that I released my most recent album called Focus. Um, and uh, so we have, I'm right in the middle of it now, writing new songs. But we are going to be releasing a Christmas song on November 12th, which is my first real official Christmas song. So I'm really excited about that. One. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah. so you're writing it yourself? You yeah. Okay. Yeah. We like I wrote it. I co-write a lot. I write with other writers, but we actually um, combined a, a new. Like I wrote a chorus, and then we combined it with the "Come, Let Us Adore Him." So it's like. Thank you. Collaboration song, I guess. Classic so, and new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it's, fun. it's called Yeshua Jesus. Mm -hmm. so, so are you are you based then here, and you just travel around? Are you? Is this, so this is pretty much still home. Yep, this is home still. I'll keep it home as long as I can. You know, I, I don't know what that will mean in the future, but right. I because um, the hardest thing living here is the getting to the airports. So obviously, right. it's mm -hmm. actually more expensive. But um, so we fly out of um, Seattle as we can mm -hmm. most of the time. But I mean, it's 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 worth it to me as long as I can physically and emotionally and mentally handle it. Because um, I get to be around my family and friends that have been around me my whole life. So. And Nicole, what has the music meant to you? Uh, well, the whole process of getting into the ministry was just kind of a life-changing thing. I was working at a hospital in radiology, mm -hmm. um, and God asked me not in an audible voice, obviously, um, if I was willing to trust him to provide for me. And I quit my job in radiology and moved back, started um, worship leading, and then once I got the call, um, just realized that putting full trust in God, it, it looks like a whole life of doing that in small things. Mm -hmm. Whether it's uh, financially, what does that look like, um, to am I good enough, all those kinds mm -hmm. of questions. Realizing that if God has put me in that situation, for some reason, He's asking me to just be faithful. So mm -hmm. it's cultivated a life of trust and eventually, hopefully, a life of faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very so cool. So, what's kind of your your message that you would mean, or you know, as far as being part of this, I guess, ministry too? Yeah. I mean, what, what do you hope people get out of it from listening to the music you guys make? Um, I think it really comes down to just that focal message of who Jesus really is. You know, when, we, when you come to understand who he is and then who he's made you to be, that you're a son and a daughter of the Most High King, like, you walk differently, you step differently, you, you realize the people around you you can have an influence on and for the better, the better of that person. And um, just knowing that we're part of a ministry that's about Jesus and finding hope and for sons and daughters to understand and feel love mm -hmm. for the first time, and it's worth a life of sacrifice. It's been, it's been, well, obviously life-changing, because I went from radiology, which just financially is like, yeah, you know, I can just go out and buy whatever I want every time. Right. Um, <laughs> and it's not to say that, you know, we make, we make good money mm -hmm. um, for life, but it's been different that way. I, I never saw myself doing this. I'd say, you know, a year ago today, I assumed that I would be a worship leader. Um, at a church probably for the rest of my life. Um, but this, it, it's been amazing. Um, I think just being able to come alongside and to serve and help the ministry, it's been something that I would have never imagined just because 
I mean, you're called to be like a drummer. You just assume you just play drums all the time, and then that's that's it. But the bigger part of the ministry is serving and helping um, and doing whatever is necessary to help move a message forward. And the drumming is something that comes as a bonus. <laughs> well, and she's a female drummer, you know. So like all the little mm-hmm. girls, you know, that drum want to be a drummer. It's like the cutest thing ever. It's like, yeah, it's so awesome. Cute. <laughs> Well, I have, that position is rotating, so there, I have a few different guys who play, but there, there's two of them from Nashville, uh, two of them from Washington, um, Seattle area, and Yakima, our worship leader, so yeah, kind of rotates. So, I mean, you know, if you were to sum up what you, you, know, you want your parties to kind of take away from the music, what would you, what would you do that Man, um... I would probably say that my, my mission would be for them to know to know God, like for, for people to know who He is. Like I want people to hear my music, be encouraged, yes, but bigger than that, to get a real taste for, for God that loves them. Like I feel like we, when you, the United States, our country is was founded on Christianity, but I think that's it's definitely I think we're turning away from that. Um, I mean, people are. There's lots of different religions, and I'm not saying that all that's bad or anything. I just think that part of that happened in a misrepresentation of who God actually is and who Jesus actually is. Like, he's he's so like full of grace. He's not, he's yeah he's he's just so he's got a strong hand, but he's not asking you to live up to these um, these expectations that are unrealistic. You know, he's walking with you. Like he's faithful. He's he's with you in every single moment. If you put your faith in him, like he works everything together for good. Like even the bad stuff, he uses it for good. You know, not not that he intended it or that we intended it, but when it happens, the good the hope is that he he can take all those things and use it for good. Like you know, your life is never at an end. You're never hopeless with him. And uh, I just want people to know that 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 God is not just up there hanging out and you you might get a meet up when you die if you're good or not. Like he's involved in our in our daily life. And he cares so deeply, but he's a gentleman. He's not gonna push himself on us. He's not gonna be like, I need to be a part of your life, you know. He created things around us and, and he's like just he's faithful. Like there's not very many faithful people in our world. And but he is and he's always there and we can count on him and he's, his promises he keeps his word. He doesn't like say something and not live up to it like he says it and he is that you can count on it and there's nobody else in this world who can do that you know there's people who can do pretty good at it but I don't know so I just want people to know the reality of how God is a part of our life well hey Columbia Basin readers thank you so much for tuning in and watching the interview I so appreciate your guys' support it's been awesome um, ever since I started, I've loved um, getting to be in the area and play shows and see your faces. So thank you again for your support, and I hope you're doing well. You can catch me online at www.hollystarmusic.com. Um, and star has two R's, don't forget that. Um, or on Twitter and Instagram at, at hollystarmusic, S-T-A-R-R, <laughs> hollystarmusic. <laughs>